Hello, and welcome to this brief introduction to Zotero from Drake Memorial Library. I'm Logan Rath, one of the librarians who typically teaches Zotero instruction, so I've decided to put this online, and let's get started. So we're going to start today on the Zotero Research Guide, which is library.brockport.edu slash Zotero. This guide has everything you need to get started. There are pages that explain everything I'm going to show you today and more, and there is a self-paced tutorial if you'd like to walk through everything on your own or need a refresher after watching this video. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install Zotero. Uh, you can register for an account first, or you can do that after you install Zotero. So we're going to click the, the button, and you're going to notice that there are two pieces. We have the Zotero software and the browser connector. And you're going to follow the standard prompts that come up after you click the appropriate button. You do need to install both. I know that I've installed the connector because I see it right here. Uh, sometimes you might just see a little Z connector. So take a minute now and download Zotero, get everything installed, and then come back to the video. Okay, so now that you've installed Zotero, let's see how it works. I'm going to start by creating an account if you haven't already. So we're going to click register for an account and you are going to register. It's a quick form to fill out, uh, just email, password, and a username. And then you'll use that to sign in. If you followed the prompts on the screen when you first installed Zotero, it would have prompted you to walk through this as well. But if you didn't, don't worry. I'm going to log in so that my screen looks like yours. I do want to caution, there is a web library available in Zotero. This is different than the Zotero software program. So right here, this is really a backup that will help us, um, or you can add things manually if you want. But beyond that, we're going to use the Zotero software program itself, which looks like this. I've been using Zotero for a while, so you can see I have a lot of assignments that I've done in here, a lot of different papers. And I use Zotero because if I want to create a bibliography, I can right click, create my bibliography, say I want it in APA 7. It's going to prompt me to save it. And I save that. And you can see it here. Let me bring it into Microsoft Word. You can see that here I have a APA reference list that's almost done for me. There's a few errors in this because I didn't fix all of my citations, uh, but it's pretty close and it's a lot easier to fix these references than it is to have to type everything out by hand. This is the Zotero program. I'm going to describe the different parts to the program and then show you how I use it. So we start on the left, we have all of the collections or folders that I've used to create bibliographies before or to organize my references. Uh, in the middle, we have the references that are part of the full library or a specific folder. On the right, we have information about each of the sources. The buttons that exist, we have a button to add a new collection. This button will add a new library, which is one that you can share. Um, you can create a new group if you want, and you can share references with your advisor or a co-author. They have the new item button, which should really be titled new item, but I want to type everything about it myself. Uh, and this is where you can go if you need to add something that is maybe in an archive or you only have a paper-based copy and it doesn't have a DOI, uh, you can add it that way. The magic wand button lets you add an ISBN, DOI, or PubMed ID, and it will magically find the information out there and pull the information into Zotero. You can add notes if you want to keep references, and you would do this by just clicking new add child note uh, on the reference, and then you could keep any sort of notes you wanted right here. And what's great about that is that if I have a note and then I need to search my library because I'm not quite sure where that is, my note will pop right up. To delete a note, just right click and then move item to trash. Over here on the right is the sync uh, circle, which if you use Zotero on multiple computers, you may need to push the sync icon uh, to bring all of your information back into one place. Now I want to talk through the preferences available as part of Zotero. I open my preferences and it's either in the Zotero menu for Mac or the edit menu for Windows, I believe. And we have a bunch of different preferences here. 
I leave everything in general all the same. Sync, this is where you're going to enter that username that you created with Zotero to make sure your library syncs all the time. I leave everything else default. Uh, under site, this is where if your word processor integration doesn't install correctly, you go to site word processors and then you install the appropriate add-in for either Word or Office. It is important that whichever word processor you use, the program is fully closed when you click add the add-in. Uh, and then when you open it again, you will see the add-in available. In my Microsoft Word, I have a Zotero ribbon, so I can add citations as I need to go. I will show you that more in depth at a later point. And lastly, the advanced section of preferences, that's where we're going to enter in the find full text configuration right here. And that is the preferences for Zotero.